The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tuesday, 24th edition. We're looking at the 10 a.m. I will be doing the, the 1 o'clock uh, show this afternoon. I believe I'll be able to schedule it in. Um, Larry is doing the uh, Las Vegas uh, money show, so I, I believe I'll be able to fit that in. So we're looking at the Dow down 30 at 33,846. Now, this is so fascinating I, it, it was with disbelief when I said the other day, um, a couple of people said, are you sure that we're not going to just tank or we're not going to climb high? And I said, no, I think what we're looking at here, if I'm correct, that the nine period exponential moving average, and I'll be talking about this in my webinar coming up a week from tomorrow. I'll be talking about how you can use certain tools to stay in positions longer than you ever dreamed you could. You could and at the same time, where you got to be careful where you've got to be careful shorting when, in fact, the technicals are saying on one hand, oh, this is where you're going to go down. Um, if if uh, so if the price is you're going to go down, but the technicals are saying, whoa, whoa, whoa be careful. And this is this is the case. Look, the Dow, since that peak D the top, that was the, the high that was made on the 14th of April at 34,082, and I, I said I'm a little worried because it's below the previous high that was made on the 14th of February, 34,331. I don't like failures under the previous high because it says, oh, we didn't even have enough power this time to take it out decisively. But what happens is if the nine period moving average is so far above the 14 period moving average, to get that to cross negative, you would have to see a Dow slide under 30 into the 33,000, probably 300s. And then it will turn down. So as it stands right now, what we're looking at, and yes, we did take positions off um, uh, the three times long positions we have. We still have our core position from from uh, October. And of course, being something that gets re-evaluated at the end of every day, we should be up much, much higher. But we're still up very nicely on that. The diamonds are actually very nice because it's almost one-to-one -to, -one to the rally. But the... the um, the fractional moves that get changed at the end of the day when these get recalculated uh, says that, yeah, it's still fantastic. We've, we had great trades going up, um, and we've now got none of those in terms of the very short term. But what we did do, and this is something that's going to be questionable, we did go because look, the Dow has gone one, two, three, four, five, six. The, the day is not even an hour into the session. So I can only say at this particular time, at 10.09 a.m. Eastern Time, mm. with the Dow down 52 at 33,822, this trend line that I drew in, little Chapman Wave inside, um, well, I'm not going to be talking about it as an inside wedge, it's too tiny, but it is a channel. It's a down channel. And this down channel says that the price is still above the nine period moving average. The nine is still way above the 14 period, and that's 33,828 where we are. And 33,691 is the 14 period moving average. And to get that, that nine to squeeze down, it's just, it's going to take a lot. It's going to take time or price or time and price. But so far, time has been in favor of just holding here in a, in a is this a distribution? And it will be a distribution if the MACD, which is just as we're speaking, about very close to turning negative, but it hasn't yet. Stochastic is negative at 73%. The unbalanced volume is pretty good at about 60%. The on, sorry, that's the relative strength. The unbalanced volume, the blue line, is quite weak. And it's just saying that there are three factors that are very important right now. One is that we've used time to consolidate. Is this distribution? It'll be distribution if a week from today, uh, Tuesday to Wednesday of next week, the Dow is trading below 33,500. Why? Because at that point, you would have used up all these little bouts of buying on every dip and every little bit of selling as it rallied to say, uh-oh, there are fund managers that are putting new positions on for the second quarter, and uh, they're probably doing quite a bit of selling. 
And we'll talk about that in a moment. We're going to look at some of the key stocks. We're looking also at um, the inside track repellent zone in the weekly chart. This is the third week that it's been in this little little zone right here. If it starts to fall, then the 32,400 to 33,300 becomes really important support. But you can see that L says that the nine period moving average has just for the past three weeks been slightly higher. And that is a good sign. The MACD has been higher. The on-balance volume is at 78%. That's good. Look at the on-balance volume. What is going? There is no volume coming into these rallies. I don't like that. And if you look at the monthly chart, you've got this incredible um, 36,952 all-time high January, peak E in the, the next month, lower high, so it becomes a peak E. <clears throat> you've held really well. And just like the weekly, you've got this down channel, this little mini channel right here as resistance. We need to see this. We've got a couple of days to go to wrap up April. Is there time to push right above it into the 34,000s? I think we're kind of running out of time to do it this week. We'll see. Days young, weeks young. We've got a lot to do. Now, I'll run these quickly because they're not as important to me, uh, only in the sense that uh, the, the S&P, uh, as I said, the day after the uh, high was made, we went we went short the S and P actually a little bit aggressively short, um, and that the reason is, it seemed to me from the action that I've been looking at at almost all the charts, uh, and the fact that we did a Chapman wave falling axis. This is what I'll be talking about in my web, and I'll be teaching these techniques. Here's this. Let me just draw it in right here. So let me go there. There it is. Okay. This particular pattern where price runs up to maybe a D, E, or F, and then it starts to make lower highs and much lower lows, and then it stalls and it tries to rally, and then it makes almost like a V-shape or a cup-shaped formation, takes that resistance out. You can go one-to-one -one in a parallel move using the same diagonal um, the angle would be exactly the same, or the number of bars. So what did we have here? We had Chapman Wave falling axe formation. This is just a declining uh, cone, expanding cone with lower highs and much lower lows. And then it takes out that uh, resistance. And then what we do is we start to do a measured move to the upside. And that took us almost one-to-one -to, -one to the level over there, but that was still a little bit conservative, but I've kept it. And it's almost exactly at 4169.48 on the 18th of April uh, with a long-legged doji just before that and then a move inside and then it spikes above but can't close above. As, um, as I'm looking at the on-balance volume giving a really good clue that there could be some kind of reversal, that just says to me that there's a greater chance that the S&P will quickly, more quickly than the Dow, have the nine period moving average close underneath the 14 to change to pink instead of green. And that'll be a negative saying you've gone from a sell signal, probably upgraded to a sell mode. I haven't yet got the sell signal. So I've still got a red plus sign above the F. Just in, in the down, I've got a, a red plus sign, a red plus sign above the peak D right there. You see? Oh, I haven't even changed it yet. It's a black. I, I, I would change that, but there's nothing to do here because the, the Dow is holding much better. Look at the QQQ. The QQQ is arching over. This is a pattern that I call right here. Let me show it to you. I call it the dreaded H pattern. Why is it the dreaded H? If we take out the left side low, you can go quite a bit lower. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 92. SP is down 28. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, folks, I'll do a little bit more of this when I do the 1 o'clock show. I know Larry loves to do this during his shows. So I'll do as a tribute to Larry. I will I will do some of this live uh, as we get there. I'd say to the Dan when we're at about 41.37 in the E-mini, that 41.30 is going to be the near-term support. You can see in the 10-minute chart, there's just so much to discuss. I, I, I had this. I'll just do it real quickly now. Look. Remember that long, narrow rectangle I said? That can go on a lot longer than your patience. And I drew this blue dashed line in the middle. I said, if it takes it out, be careful, because we could take out the base. Well, we've done that. So these techniques I will discuss. Then we had a little mini rectangle right here in the 10-minute E mini. A little mini went to peak A, B, C, D, and then an E with a doji candle turned down. And it came to the uh, 41.30 level in a, about a, a little quicker time than I anticipated, but it took it out. And now that's going to be your next uh, area. In fact, now the new resistance is we're at 41.29. New resistance is at 41.36 to 41.37. Um, I still see some buying coming in. I'll talk about that as we move on, but let's just do this. I haven't quite finished. So I had a question about platinum. I think it was uh, yesterday or the day before. And I said, by my work, Platinum has got a left side, right side price time match, not to the plumb line of, of March, but to the plumb line, uh, um, sorry, end of February, but the plumb line mid-March. And um, and that took us uh, early March, about the 6th. And that would take us to about the 23rd, 24th of, of uh, April. And we've done that to peak F. We went to peak F. Now Platinum is starting to uh, rest a little bit after this beautiful cup formation. And, it, and uh, the uh, monthly chart, this is the daily. If you look at the weekly chart, you can see that there's something a little unusual here in that not only did we make a beautiful cup formation, but we've gone to an alternate count F slash B. Now I have a little bit more weight on the F. That is, we are now a little bit toppy, and we could be taking a bit of a digestive phase. But if the MACD, which is uh, at uh, still very strong, and the stochastic, which is only at 68, is able to get to 70, 78 and then 82% in the next week, is the weekly chart, then I would say, great. Now we're looking at a chance that uh, it could start its journey towards the 1,200 mo moment uh, mark. But at this particular point, uh, 1060 to 1040, or 1030 actually is going to be a really important support. It's at 109, 1094. Had a question about P, could I revisit PCT? 
PCT is Pure Cycle Tech Inc. Uh, recycles contaminants into pure polypropylene. Uh, let me just have a cup of tea here. Okay. <clears throat> Had a beautiful gap up move today. Maybe it's earnings. Spiked up to 654 from yesterday's 520 or so uh, level. And it's given almost all of that back, but it's still up 43 cents. So within the context, I had said I'm not sure that it's ready yet for the, the big move up into the 750 area. Wow, it certainly had a chance today. It went to uh, 654. If that held, uh, then I would say if if on a closing basis it closed above 648, that would suggest strongly that the price could push the MACD up, push the stochastic, which is only a 7.91 up. At this particular stage, I have to say just be real careful. Um, I don't think it's ready for the big time yet. It's still trying to build a base, and the base has to be between $5 and $4 over the next month. Uh, if at any point it starts to close on a weekly basis above 687, maybe 687 to 705, that would be really good action, but it hasn't done that yet. Um, so let me just go back here. I wanted to show you gold down just three, stuck in this range. And I've got this big rectangle, which I drew in quite some time ago, about a month or so ago. And I think I'm going to stay with that. Yes, there's a chance that it's going to make an arch formation. But as long as those financials are acting as poorly as they are, I would say that big money, I don't mean uh, mutual funds, I'm talking about countries, are going to use um, the opportunity to, to buy some gold they usually go to the best currency, but the dollar is still under pressure. And we've got this talk about different currencies coming in to try to take over as a premier, at least to 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 make a dent in the dollar as, as the premier currency. Um, so as I'm looking at this, I have to go to silver as well. And silver is trading uh, down 54 cents at 24.77. That peak F is going to get, instead of a red, a plus sign It's going to change to a, a sell signal and then a sell mode. If uh, silver, it doesn't have to close there, but if it touches 24.26, then I probably will upgrade almost immediately from a sell signal to a sell mode. But we haven't even got a sell signal yet. The day's young. But there is that pattern that I spoke about, the dreaded H, straight down, and then it makes an arch formation. It's taking out the left side. Look, if there's a close under 24.715 in the continuous contract, that was the low of the, 14th, of the 19th of April, then there's a real, you've got, two bars, I'll say three bars, in which to close above it. That would say, okay, now I can bounce a little bit to maybe a moving average resistance. But if it doesn't do that, that says watch that daily because that's going to impact the weekly. Yeah, you've got an alternate count as well. It looks more like an F than an A to me. And you've got the inside track repellent zone in the monthly chart that says, ho, ho, back under that trend line. So we're going to be watching that for the Friday afternoon close of April. So even silver's weakening a little bit, but only weakening a little bit. As I said, I've, I'm real close to a sell signal, but not even I haven't given that because the 9 is still way above the 14. They're still so showing inner strength because today is the day that both in the Dow and the S&P is where there should be an acceleration into the close after four, five sessions, six sessions of really small, small little candles. This is where you either get the big move to the upside or the big move to the downside. So 136 is my rule of thumb. We're on the sixth day. Let me just double check that INDU. Is this the sixth or the seventh day? One, two, three, four, five. This is the seventh session. So this is a session that says, well, if the if the if the Dow holds just steady here, it's down 79, and by the end of the day it closes down 35. That's one thing. That's really good action. If it means distribution, yes, but it also means it's holding very well. Wow, if there is a move down 175 or more after 3 o'clock, that could accelerate lower. We'll see. But you've got now, I wanted to do this just to show you. Look, high-grade copper. Look at this move. That is a whopper. And someone had asked me um, a couple of days ago about CSSO. That's a um, copper company. Let me just do this right here because I've got uh, the weekly chart. I've already got a sell signal pretty much like a sell mode in the uh, copper. Look at this. Uh, SCCO, this is Southern Copper. Where is it? There it is. Southern Copper, leg D in the monthly chart, peak F slash A, 
in the weekly chart and a peak D in the daily. I'm really close to putting the, a, a down arrow there. And I've got a midpoint, a mid channel line at the 75, maybe 50 area. So I'm watching this really closely because uh, FCX is in the same category. We, oh, this is already, and let me put a down arrow from the Doji peak D high, where it failed to, to get to the left side high in a price match, which was perfect, except it failed by about a point to get to the exact level on the exact day. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just, I'm real cautious here. I, I just don't see any reason to, 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 to really go out on a limb. And uh, I'll be back in a moment. There are tons of things I want you to look at. I want you to look at some of the uh, medical instrument companies. I was asked if I would look at. And we'll be back. We'll be back in a moment. Basil Chaplin, Tiger Technicians Hour. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Dallas down 82. s and 29. We're going to go straight to Ari in Arcadia. Ari, how are you? I'm doing very well, Dallas. So, since you would uh, like we to... we, we've been discussing WPM. Wheat and precious metals, silver, yes, yes. And uh, so what's Can your I stance think, right now? And I have puts. I sold puts. I sold, I sold 43 puts. Wait, all, the, yes. all, my put, all my puts are in the money, but it, it's wonderful. You know, I, I can't complain. So I sold the May 43 puts. They're all in the money. So I don't have to worry about anything, but it is stalling. So I'd like to get your opinion about it. Okay. 
So let's do this. What we're looking at, uh, wheat and precious metals, WPM, trading at 48.76, down 61 cents, has made this little pyramid pattern that goes straight. It's like the Eiffel Tower goes straight up and straight down, but it did go to a peak E. The MACD at that point was strong. The stochastic was suggesting that it's getting a little toppy because the right shoulder was weaker, the on balance was weaker as well. And now you start to see a pullback and the nine period moving average is within a day or so. Let's just say it's within a point of crossing negative. So what I'd be looking at in this particular instance, just on its by itself, I'm, not, I'm going to just for the moment, I'm just briefly going to show SLV, which is at a peak E of the Sinan, the Chapman Wave Sinan Doji uh, candle the day before the actual big red candle at E was made. It's almost the same pattern. There's your dreaded H pattern in the uh, thing. And it's almost like a head and shoulders pattern. And it's about to test the next. So let's go back to... Uh, uh, WPM, WPM, there it is. And you can see that it has a pretty similar pattern. Uh, it's got a little mini dreaded H's right here. So what I'm going to su suggest to you is um, watch closely. It's you, you see how we've taken time. I always talk about time as if it's as important as price. Because sometimes you can use time in a digestive phase. We've done that in the Dow so far down a little bit in the S&P, and sometimes you can use price by going straight up and straight down or just taking off on the upside because it's using an accelerated and uh, momentum, and that's using price. So in this particular instance, what we've done is we've used time and price, and then all of a sudden, when it hit uh, the, on the 19th, 48.81, it kind of stalled. And now for five days, it's even as we speak, it's at 48.82. So this is saying to me that th there have been determined buyers who keep wanting to get the stock. They will be extremely disappointed if it takes out 47.50. I'm just doing this by eye. Let me just double check if that's correct. 47.74 there and then as the 74.52. Yes. If there's a close, it's not just a, a test. It has to be a close. If there's a close under 47.50, and it's at 48.83, so it's a dollar 30 lower. And even today, with the, with the selling pressure in in gold and silver, it's only down 53 cents. It, it, it's really one of the big winners and one of the strongest stocks. If there is an ex a close under that 40 uh, 47.50 level, I think the whole area of this candle on the 27th of March, on the way up, that big green candle, 47.26 was the high, 45.70. That's going to be the candle. So now what I'm going to do is I'll draw. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. I'm just doing this based on my my experience uh, with this particular pattern. And normally I would like to go to the midpoint, the, the plumb line. That would be the, the line that we're looking at here is the high that was made right there. Oops. Let me just move that over right there. But my eye says there's a lot of work to be done. And that's a little bit, that would take me to around about uh, the 5th of May at 45, 90, 90. So I'm going to just move it along. And what I like to do is to say where on the left side, and this is what I'll be showing you when I do my webinar week from uh, uh, tomorrow, how you can draw in these trend lines that give you very good clues. So let me do this. I'm going to match this up and I think it just misses so I would need to extend a little bit to the right there it is there we go <clears throat> yeah it needs to go a little bit to the right but that's okay for now it's it gives us a clue at least this is just a guideline this just says to me this is the pattern if it continues weaker but the fact that it's gone sideways says don't rule out the fact that the nine period moving average hasn't yet crossed negative so don't get too carried away because um, there's still internal strength. So I then say, okay, the what ifs has to include the downside, and you would also like to know what's on the upside. What do I have to look for to say, hey, wait a minute, I'm wrong. It's starting to move much higher. And what I would say is this candle high, the candle of the 18th of uh, April at 50.85, if there is a close above it between now and this coming Tuesday, uh, Monday or Tuesday, because it's going to have to happen quite soon. If there's a close above, it says, whoops, be careful. 
there's still uh, enough residual strength. And you can see in the weekly chart, the 9, the price is way above the 9, the 9 to 47, 38. The 14 period moving up 45, 97. The MACD is good. Stochastic still above 80%, 84%. So I wouldn't get too carried away because it's got to go step by step. So the daily has to lead the weekly. Then the weekly has to lead the monthly, which went out of its inside track repellent zone uh, for a moment, and now it's testing the trend line. So this is a really important week coming up. Um, and I mean the week going all the way into next Tuesday, the Tuesday to, uh, week from today. So right now it's down 63 cents, it's accelerating down. I think you're, you're correct in looking for a digestive phase. At this point, I'm saying digestive because it's had a spectacular move from the, about the 37 level all the way to the 52, 53 level. That's fabulous. Now it's just digesting it. So that's what I'm looking at. And I'll give you a time sequence as well. It says that by tomorrow, 4781 will be the Chapman Wave inside wedge target support line. And it just goes down by about 30 cents or 40 cents daily uh, based on this. But we haven't even gotten close to this line yet, but I am putting it in. And I'm just saying to you, I think it's digesting big gains. And I agree with you, it is pulling back. But the, the level I'd be looking at as a target would be around 46. And let's talk again if it gets to 40, 4680 in that area. Let's, let's see whether it's starting to find some support and it's going to have a decent rally from there or if it's going lower. I hope that helps you, Ari. Thank you so much, Basil. And congratulations, you really worked this one very well, and keep it up. Thank you for calling. So, uh, folks, we're looking now at the Dow's down 120. I remember this is the day where we st we need to see an acceleration away from the upside. If I'm, I'm correct in saying we've had a digestive phase, we've had a distribution phase, and now comes the success rate for those who, who were determined to short or sell against those that keep wanting to buy. And I'm just looking at this and saying, uh, it's a process, and I said that a week ago, I said, folks, it's gonna be a process because the nine period moving average is so much higher than the, um, uh, than the, the, uh, than the 14 period moving average. So think of it as a, something that has to work its way, and it can either do that very suddenly with just a horrible series of bad news uh, 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 stories coming out, and the market responds negatively, or it's just a series of lower lows and lower highs. And I think at this point, I'm still thinking, certainly in the Dow, that it's lower lows and lower highs. Then I want you to look at stocks like Agilent, just in the medical technology or scientific solutions. A couple of people asked me about it. I'll include Medtronic here. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, Dow's down 190. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee. 
at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, I was just about to look at the uh, uh, medical companies or scientific companies, but uh, Connie and Dan wants, uh, can you check INAB? INAV Connie, you like to play with fire, huh? Uh, it's at two, 261, down 38 cents, down 13%. That's nothing. Yesterday it was trading at dollar two and it spirals up to almost four. And, and now it's from the 200 period moving average, that's support. So 216 is your key support. A close under that says it's going to fill the gap even more. Uh, I don't know what these are. I N uh, I N S V I O I N S B I O something Inc. Um, anyway, uh, all I can say is that the weekly chart, and there must have been a news story out. And today the news story is still there as a, as a functioning uh, aspect of its buying potential. But uh, we'll see because the day is young. And all I can say is if, if INAB can hold and buy two, today is right now it's 10.43 a.m. If by... 128 to 143. Yeah, it's got to be just after 130 in the afternoon. If it's getting close to 299, then there's a really good chance it's going to try to test the high of the day. And if it breaks three, there's a real quick move to 325. I'm actually seeing it. That's that's on the positive side. I'm actually seeing it a little bit more negatively here. And I'm just going to say, if my eye is correct, the open of a 227, and it's now 257, if 227, if it closes, if it, for 15 to 20 minutes, if it's trading under two, what did I just say? Two, two fifty three was the open. If it's close, if it's trading under 247, there's a real good chance it's going to test the low of the day of 243. So real, be, be real careful. H O L O. Um, holo. I actually followed this yesterday. I saw it on ticker or somewhere. I saw ho holo and I thought, oh holo, and then I remembered it's actually H H Halo. There's a foundation that I like to, to donate to. It's here in the Boston area. A friend of mine started it. It's um, uh, it's for disabled children, handicapped children. And it's it's really for the children and it's for the um, for the parents. Can you imagine what I just it's it, the the courage, the the tenacity, the the temerity that people have because they have a child disabled. It's round the clock. It never stops. They never have a vacation. So this is so that people can actually have someone look after their their child while they actually take a bit of a break. It's really a fantastic foundation. H A L O. But in the meantime, back of the ranch. This is H O L O. Um, and uh, we're looking at it trading at 213, down 70 cents, down 24%. And now look at this. In the travel way methodology, remember, we like to identify a buy signal that can go to a buy mode that can give you at least four higher peaks, peak D. That's where other things can happen. It did it once from the low that was made at around, what was it, 1.0 something? 1.88 on the 24th of Feb. And then it spirals to peak D above the 14 period moving average, but can't close above it. 
that's at 233 on the 21st of March, pulls back, but it keeps hugging, hugging that 14 period moving average. And finally, the 14 crosses positive to go positive and goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D yesterday, whoosh. And it's going from the $1 area, then to the $2 area. And what does it do? It hits $3.47 on yesterday. Uh -oh. Today's low is $2.14, and $1.98. Wow, you love, I know what you're doing, but if you are really quick, you can play with fire as long as you are putting in stops, you're watching it every second, and you just keep taking off money as it's moving up. And if it goes high, you say, that's fine, you're my cash cow. You don't want it to be the other way around, cow cash, or whatever. what would be the opposite of cash cow? The bull, whatever. Okay, so, um, yes, and the other one is ACON. ACON, I don't recall seeing this. This is at a really big move. Yesterday, it went up into the almost 240 area. Today, it's at 108. No, I, this one I wouldn't touch at all. This one is different altogether. Maybe this is the one that's building steam because it's above 200 period moving average, but I need more evidence right now. Just be careful because if it closes under 0.95, it's done for now. This is like a one-horse story, whap, and then it gives it all, it gives it back, and today's even lower. This is the one I'd be real careful of. The one that we were looking at that has a little bit more potential is the first one, which is INAB. So, okay, but that's it. And this one is called uh, Actor something, certainly not Activision. You know, a, a, a clarion, I think it's called, a clarion. Okay, so now we've got a couple of things that I want to do. So here we go. A is Agilent. We had this ages ago in the sub source subscribers. We had huge gains all the way. You remember, it went, uh, this is the one that, oh, there we were long. Back in March of 2020, ran all the way up, took off profits, 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 and then got out completely. Then it had a really good move. But my suspicion is this Agilent technology, scientific solutions for labs and business, it's a great area. I think it's just a little under pressure now, and it is in the day. Look, the 200 period moving average at peak D has turned it into a potential arch formation. This is the dreaded H pattern. Uh, TMO is the one I always put together with it, one that I've seen forever on Route 128 in Boston area, but in Waltham. Um, and yet every, I think we've owned it just one brief period, and yet I always talk about a fantastic company. There was this guy that started it, I can't remember the Greek name, what was his name? Oh, he did, everything he did was right. He just, it was like a, a monster to the upside. But it's been stalling, they've been taking, now it's Thermo Fisher Scientific Inc. Medical Equipment. They, it's had a little bit of a problem uh, recently. So it went to a peak G in the daily announced at the 200 period moving average of five out of six. I said, when I do my webinar, I'm gonna talk about some of these because I think this is an area for a little later in the year, It's they're gonna come back really strongly. I should put ISRG in, I didn't really, but I haven't I haven't even notated. It went to a peak C, that goes to a D, E, and it's stalled at a peak E right there. Yes, your little stalling formation. It says a little distribution maybe, and then it starts to fill in the gap of 299. Intuitive Surgical, Da Vinci Robots, peak D in the monthly chart. Uh, way back in 2022, up in the 360 area, I think it was, comes all the way down to 180, and now it's up at uh, two, uh, 299. Yeah, great companies, but also, uh, I think Boston Scientific, also in the Boston area, Boston Scientific, um, I remember the CEO, uh, let's see, oh, in fact, the brother of the CEO, was a, his son was a very good friend of my son, they went to Newton North together, um, so 51.49 right now, Boston Scientific, just having a, a well-deserved break after making, is this an all-time high? I can't, I can't recall. I should know this very well. Yes, all-time high. Now it's taking a bit of a digestive phase. Boston Scientific, BSX, 51.50, up 16 cents. It hit a double top. Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal, 53.20 uh, on the 20th of April and 53.21 on the 21st. This is what I call Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal, where it's fractionally different, either a little bit higher or a little bit lower, and then it takes a dive. And that just says, ran out of energy, double top, be careful. That's just on the on a parallel bar. In other words, it's not a double top making a U-shape pattern. It's just had two bars right at a high, or almost in this case, an all-time high. Now it's pulling back. Lovely chart. I, I think that if this comes back to the 40, 47 to 43 area.
someone remind me because I think this could be uh, ready for another nice move to the upside. I'll be back for the final segment. And don't forget, I will be doing the one o'clock show, uh, the Larry show uh, hour. That's uh, not his show. I'll be doing his hour. Dow's down 70, PSB's down 27. I'll talk about what I'm anticipating today and tomorrow. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. A uh, question about where I buy BIIB or start a position. Uh, I'd wait. But yeah, I, yeah, great. Why is it all notated? Uh, BIIB is um, a Biogen Inc. is trading down five and a half at 287. I'd wait for 280. Oh, well, your question was 286. No, 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 no. I would wait longer. I'd wait. I'd have patience. Just This is the moment that you need the most patience ever. Don't be so anxious that you want to start buying just yet. You have to wait. That's why Wednesday week will be just a perfect time for a webinar where we've had some digestive phase, and now we can be looking at stocks. Is this the time to be buying, or is it still early? But I would say 283 to 280 is the level that I'd wait. Uh, so uh, one, uh, what I'll do is, in, in uh, Larry, show, I'll do more of this time sequence in, the, in my notations, of the, uh, so like the E-mini. We'll do whatever. We'll choose gold or something like that, whatever it is. Um, I, all right, right now what I'm looking at is the Dow is holding really well. Look, down 73. The S&P is much weaker, down uh, 28. So my, my contention here is it's a process. And the process says that the Dow holding well, at some point either we've got, so you've got Microsoft in the, in the Dow. You've got Apple. 
So those are going to be key metrics in the big techs. Um, uh, Microsoft looks to me like if it doesn't hold 270, it's a 279. If it closes under 277 the next two days, the 271 to 270 area by uh, first week of May would be my target. Um, we're looking at Apple, which has been also holding extremely well. Look at this. It, it's a big deal. It doesn't care about the market at 165 down 17 cents. I mean, is this one that you want to add to your portfolio if you haven't? We'll be talking about that because uh, it's it's showing that it has internal strength technically. Look at the weekly chart, how steady it is. So these are the things I'll talk about. I'll be back in a few hours' time, oh, two hours' time. Um, have a great rest of the day. I'll also be back with Tom a little later this afternoon. And I think I get the music. I thought I heard the music. Do I beat the music? I don't usually. There it is. I don't usually beat the music. I'll be back in a little while, and for the close, if the Dow is less than minus.